So let's start with a quick recap of on making a map tail recursive. And we'll, after this recap, tomorrow's, uh, I mean Wednesday's lesson, we will uh, study the general recursion principle a bit further um, in a whole lesson just dedicated to that. But today, let's just go over the specifically map, how it works and why it works in that way. So this is the an example of uh, calling map with some F and a list with three elements. And then we're going to look at the unfolding of the evaluation to kind of convince ourselves that we uh, it works as, uh, as we expect it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, use the same um, use the same code that we had from previous lesson, uh, and I kind of want to want to explain step by step what's going on. Um, so first, what we do is when we call the map iterator, it will call. It will go through um, the internal function which in this case we called uh, map iter, right? <clears throat> and how does it work? Well, in the first call of map iter, what that does, it uh, is initialized where you call iter and you pass the accumulator uh, that is empty and just returns uh, the lambda x that returns x. So this is what we have as the accumulator, right? So in step zero, so let's keep track of that. Accumulator is uh, lambda x that takes x. Okay, this is what we have so far. And then when we call it for the first time, we call map iter and this acum zero, again, this lambda zero, holds. Um, and the list that we have to proce process is gonna be the list with one, two, three, right? And the first element of the list that needs to be handled is one. Right, so this is the first, and the rest of the list is going to be two, three. So let's make the, all of that explicit. So first is one, rest is um, list with two, three. Right, and let's make um, okay. And the accumulator is just contains a lambda x that takes x. Right, so then when we call map iter with these with this state, with this particular state, what's gonna happen is um, the list is not empty, as we know. Actually, we can even start with that. So what is the list? The list is gonna be, L is gonna be uh, list one, two, three, right? So this would be uh, first of L, and this would be rest of L. Okay, just making everything very explicit. Okay, so so this is the state, and this is kind of like the, the internal stuff, right? Uh, and this is what happens when we call, um, in this case, Pam iter uh, for the first time. First call to Pam iter. Okay, this is what happens. Right, let's make a little little stars to make this a bit more. More emphasis. Okay, so this is what we have. And here we are calling accumulator for the second time. Why? Because the list is not empty, so it falls in the else branch. And what else does? It creates a new pem iter and it creates a new lambda. So let's create that lambda. Let's copy paste that to kind of state, oops. Because that's the only interesting thing, all right? So this would be the second call to pem iter, right? Okay, so a cum, we're gonna write it. Uh, so what is the list? Now the list L is gonna contain list two and three, right? This is gonna be the new L because it's gonna be the rest. It's gonna contain the rest of L. Uh, the new accumulator is gonna contain a new list, right? Let's call this uh, Y. Okay, what is a cum? A cum is what we had before, so it's gonna be lambda x, right? Need a little space, okay. And what is uh, f? f is gonna be what was before, 
First of f, we know what it is. It's going to be 1, so let's replace that by 1. f of 1. And what is the new list? It's going to be y, because we said so, right? That's how we define. So this is the new accumulator. Okay. Uh, and uh, this is what we used to call. So now we know that we're going to hit the else branch because the list is not empty. So what is the first of L? It's going to be two. And what is going to be uh, uh, the rest of L? It's going to be uh, a list with three. Okay. So this is what we have. So now it's going to be the third call to Pam Eater. Right, uh, where the list now becomes the list with three, right? And now we're going to do a similar ac exercise for the cum. The accumulator, now what does it have? It's going to have, the only new part is this, right? Where, so a cum, it's something that takes a lambda, let's call it Z. And the body of the Z, let's copy paste that, just so you guys believe me. The body is going to be something like this. Okay. Um, okay, so what is a cum? It's the previous accumulator, so it's going to be this. Oof. Not very pretty, huh? Uh, and then F, what is the first? The first we know is 2. Okay, and what is the new list? Is Z. Okay. So let's try to make this more or less pretty. So the body of the lambda is just calling a function where the function being called is the accumulator and um, the parameter being called is the the construction of the of the list okay okay and finally we get to the last the third call to the p parameter the list is still uh, not empty right because it's still wait. yeah the list still has one one thing left so the last bit what we do is something very similar to this which is a third call to parameter Um, which in this case is going to be very similar to this, uh, but now the list is going to be empty. Uh, and now we have another lambda w. Uh, and now we have another function call, right? Where the function being called is the old accumulator, right? And actually, let me remove the print just so that the spaces. Okay, so some parentheses are missing. Okay, so this is the function. And then the body is going to be cons of f of 3, right, and w. Right, so we call the old accumulator, and we're going to pass um, the new list. Okay, and we close the, the function call. And finally, we close the function. Okay. Now I close this. So this is the accumulator. The list is empty. Finally, we're at the else branch, the empty branch. What does that do? Call accumulator and pass empty to it. So that's what we're going to do here. Right? And if you look here, basically what we're doing is we're replacing W by empty. So let's do that. So this is going to be this list, right? What we do is we replace, uh, let's evaluate this right now. So that's the same as writing a list with just um, F3, right? Uh, next step is here. 
which is evaluating, right? So we're going to replace uh, by Z, Z by this. Okay, so let's remove. Where is Z? Z is here. Boom. Remove. Okay, I don't know about the parentheses, but this is more or less it, right? I think we can even fix the parentheses. So let's see. This is the lambda, and this would be the cons. Now what we need to do is just close the parentheses. Okay, this is what we have. Okay, and finally here, what we do is we apply, uh, oh wait, wait, we can, can simplify this, right? Because this is a cons we're gonna add to the left. Right, okay. Now we want to apply, replace, find and replace Y by this list. Right, and we want to pass uh, X to it, because I forgot that's what we had at the, at the top. So this is finally it. Wait, we want to pass the empty list. Okay, yes. Okay. Uh, and finally, confused. Ah, oh, no, wait. It's not this. Very confused. So this is the list that we want. This is X, and this is the the list, right? Because the initial lambda is this, right? So the final step we want to have a lambda S with X, and here we have cons of this, right? When we can simplify that by just writing list, removing, I think it should be something like this. And finally, we are at this step, right? Where we have a lambda x and we're gonna pass a list, right? Which just returns the list itself. And that's why you get um, all these steps, okay? So there's some parentheses wrong here. Um, and I think that the first call, I didn't find replace it correctly, let me see. Yeah, this is correct, and uh, this uh, this is not correct. Okay, let me just correct this here. And this should be, because it's always, let me indent this. So this is lambda, and then you take the old accumulator, you call that with, um, with the cons, right? And then, and then this should be it. Okay. Right. And then you should get that. So this error is propagated, should be propagated downward. The innermost thing is a bit messed up, but you get the idea, I think. <clears throat> okay. So this is more or less what I wanted to talk. Just go a bit more slowly through this evaluation. I hope you do try it at home. Oops, no battery. Uh, let me pause the video. So yeah, I wanted to basically go through the um, implementation of map tail recursive and why it works. Um, again, to recap, whenever you have an algorithm such as the, this, where you have a recursive function that has some base case and some um, non, you know, not tail call optimized uh, code, you can rewrite it so that it's uh, it becomes in this shape. And you can apply this transformation to any algorithm you have, as long as it follows the same step, it should produce the, the correct results. But actually there's a smarter way of doing this. We can abstract this idea with um, a function as we'll see in the following lesson. Um, again, and if we apply uh, the pattern that we just learned, we get the map, the tail, recur tail optimized version that you just looked at that is here very succinct, although a bit not, not the more obvious, not the obvious, the most obvious way of implementing map. Uh, we'll also do a performance analysis to convince you why this is actually a good idea uh, and why you would you want it to abstract it away in a, in a specific function. Okay, so next, in the next video, we're gonna do a, we're gonna learn about scanning or filtering results in a list.